Good evening everyone, Matt here and welcome to another review here of me behind the camera. Hope you're all doing very well today. Uh, and also I just want to say a big big thank you for all of the fantastic support that uh, you guys have been showing me. It's been amazing. And I just want to mention I know that I put that message on my YouTube. I was in a really bad place at the time guys and I was, uh, I was, a lot of bad stuff was going on. Um, but I, I appreciate every word that you guys have put on that message. It really it means the world to me. Thank you so much. That's why I'm bringing you all these reviews, basically, because, well, I, re I one, I seem to really prefer this style. And two, you guys just deserve content. You guys are just fantastic. So thank you again for the support. Um, I couldn't have been appreciated anymore. And I'm not trying to sound stupid. I'm trying to sound silly, but it really is the truth. Uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys, so thank you very much for that. Now, in today's review, we have a classic Woody Aromatic from 1985, simply known as Open by Roger and Gallet. Now this fragrance I've had for about three years, and this is one of those fragrances that is quality, quality stuff, yet I never ever use it all the time. I only use this stuff really when uh, I really want to smell... what's the word? Whenever I just want to have a different approach to a lot of the other fragrances that I'm wearing, basically. This one is different, basically, than a lot of the older fragrances that I own. A little bit of information about it. Sadly, was unable to find a perfumer, but whoever created this juice did a, a fantastic job, in my opinion. Uh, it was released in 1985, and it's known as a Woody Aromatic. Now, Woody Aromatics aren't personally one of my favourite types of fragrances. The reason for that is I'm not really a huge fan of Woody-based scents. If anything, Orientals are my bread and butter. Those are my sort of go-to scents if I'm if I'm looking for something that's well suited for me. This one is an, aqu an acquired taste, in my opinion. You're either really going to like this one or you're not really going to be a big fan of it. It's either going to be nothing special or something really spectacular. If It just depends on your taste in fragrance and, you know, everything like that. Now, personally, if there's any fans of uh, older fragrances out there, this is a fragrance that you need to have in your collection. This is different, like I said before. This one doesn't smell like a lot of others out there. So to me, this is definitely one that is full bottle worthy to add to your collection, in my opinion. Uh, it came from a great year for fragrances. Um, of course, we had Hugo Boss um, bringing out their first fragrance, which was, of course, 1985. Now, Roger and Gallet are a company from France that uh, they've always basically made fragrances. They were founded in, in, in 1862, sorry. And uh, the, the history of the house really uh, begins many years before the company was founded. Uh, in 1806, uh, there was a, a man named Jean-Marie Farina who established the, a very successful business supplying eau de colognes based in a very historic original formula created by his great-granduncle, Johann Maria Farina. Then he sold the catalogue of his company to Roger and Gallet, and the pair produced this beloved formula under the name of Jean-Marie Farina Extra Vieille which is extra ancient eau de cologne, and it's offered the fragrance in perfumed soaps and other scented products that delight both new and old Farina clientele. In the 21st century, the company maintains its tradition of fragrances based on rare plants and essential oils in chic and distinctive packaging that recalls the Art Deco era. Now, I don't have the box for this fragrance, but as you guys can see by this bottle, we do definitely get an artistic design, and what makes this bottle unique is the fact that we don't have the spray in the center of the uh, the bottle. We actually get it on the far right, which makes it uh, very, very different. And it's actually surprisingly really easy to spray as well. So we get open along there, we get Roger and Galley, and uh, we get the color of the juice, which is like a nice, uh, I don't know, like a nice light amber color. We get Eau de Toilette, uh, natural spray, 100 ml, 3.3 fluid ounce and what I really like about the cap is it has this sort of like gold band around it which really adds a nice touch of uh, elegance to the fragrance it's really really beautiful so let's get on to how this 
beauty smells. Let's, in fact, spray it. Here we go. So the sprayer for this is really powerful. Uh, I'm going to show you guys what the sprayer looks like. It doesn't look like your typical metal sprayers that you get on a lot of fragrances. For example, uh, sprayers like this, like here's a, a bottle of blue jeans. It's not a sprayer like this where it's made of metal. This one is a plastic sprayer, which is the same material as the, uh, the overall plastic part of the bottle. So it's all sort of built in. Sorry about the lighting, guys. These videos will improve over time in terms of the lighting. In fact, let's do this. There we go. Bloody hell, that helps. Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, pretty much all, all the stuff there. And we get Roger and Galley actually imprinted in the glass on the bottom, which is quite nice as well. So, how does this fragrance smell? Here we go. What are the first notes I get? Well... Overall, straight away, when you when you first spray this, the first thing you immediately get is tobacco. But it's a very floral tobacco. It's smoky as hell, um, almost in the way of it being like a like like someone smoking a pipe. That's literally what this reminds me of, like a pipe tobacco smoke. With a beautiful lavender behind it as well, which uh, adds that floral to it. But there's just this overall herbaceous smell that I just absolutely adore with this fragrance. This, this green quality, this just strong, intense smell. But there's also a lot of patchouli, which uh, really does creep through once the fragrance has been on your skin for quite a bit. I've got the dry down on my other hand, guys, and uh, I'm really left with a beautiful vetiver in the dry down. Really, really nice. Now, there is citrus in this as well. There's some lemon. I believe it's lemon. Yeah, we do get some lemon. A Malfi lemon, actually. Um, and we also get some bergamot as well, which, in all fairness, the citruses don't really come through when you spray this. This isn't really about the citruses. It's more about the woods. And uh, the only thing that really creates a woody smell out of this is the vetiver. And uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love vetiver. I love the cleanliness of some vetivers. I really enjoy the mossiness of some vetivers out there. And it's just so smoky and dusty and clean. And it can really have an ethereal quality to it, which I really love. But the vetiver in open is very earthy. And it leaves a very damp, woody smell to it, um, which is just really, really gorgeous in my opinion. I mean, you don't, you really don't get blends like this created nowadays. Um, heavily '80s fragrance, heavily, heavily. But it's done in a way that smells completely unique. It doesn't smell like anything else in my collection, without a doubt. I also get time in this, uh, which will be creating that herbaceous, um, floral bouquet kind of smell. It's very green though. Very green. In fact, that thyme's really strong, but really, really gorgeous at the same time. So like I said, it's not really about the, it's not really about this, the Amalfi lemon or the bergamot in this scent. Um, it's more about that tobacco and it's definitely to do with that lavender as well, just behind it. <sighs> I'm a very big fan of lavender. Um, to me, it's it's certainly one of my favorite notes. And uh, this one is a no brainer. I think if you're a fan of lavender, then you're really gonna like this. But if you're also a fan of tobacco, then you'll really like this. I mean, of course, tobacco is very popular nowadays and a lot of new releases have tobacco in them, but this tobacco is very, very special in my opinion. This is done in a way that smells like the actual, like the actual pipe tobacco smoke itself. But that smokiness, once it's been on your skin for literally about five minutes, that tones down a bit. And the patchouli creates a cleanliness to it. Which really, like I said, stops that smokiness, makes it cleaner, and just creates this overall dark smell, you know? 
absolutely spot on absolutely gorgeous uh i just love it this is uh, no doubt about it and a very very mossy fragrance a very earthy green um beautiful absolutely gorgeous so i mean I, I i don't want to talk too much about it because i could really talk about this fragrance for a long time because it's it's very misunderstood in my opinion a lot of people don't really like this because it's probably too over smoky um people probably don't like it because it's yeah it doesn't really have a lot going on in it which i'll be honest there's nothing really in this that smells appealing um it really to me just smells like a nice classic fragrance i mean to me apart from i mean even though i've just said it's nice and it's a nice classic fragrance it is no doubt beautiful because of course i love the type of notes that are in these fragrances like the moss and those florals like lavender and the tobacco really does create a milestone in terms of anything else that's uh, been released during that time. And even today, I really don't think there's anything like this. It's it's just so different in terms of like its approach that you're definitely not going to find anything exactly like it. The closest fragrance that I would say is uh, probably Havana by Aramis, just because of that tobacco. Uh, they have very similar tobacco notes. Um, Havana, I've always thought of it being uh, less herbaceous, definitely more aromatic, without a doubt. And the tobacco in that one is, again, reminds me of that smoke. It reminds me of a pipe letting off that tobacco smoke. That's what it reminds me of in Havana. And again, very similar to what it is in this. Very similar. But it is a very gorgeous fragrance, guys. I would, I would not, not ignore this one because I really don't know how long this fragrance is going to be around for. I wouldn't be surprised if this was discontinued soon because uh, I just think the quality of it's really good and the price that it goes for is insanely cheap. Uh, you'll find bottles of this going for about 28 quid, which is, you know, really not that bad of a price for a fragrance. I'm going to give my give you guys the ratings. I'm going to give the bottle design. I'm going to give it a uh, 8.5 out of 10. I think it's very nice. Um, open by Roger and Galley. Looks very fancy on the front. Um, yeah, it's a really, really nice bottle design. I'm going to give it an 8.5. In terms of the juice, guys, I'm going to give this a 9.5. I think it's, I think it's totally got something to offer in terms of the fragrances nowadays. Um, if you're someone who likes lavender, really into tobacco smoky uh mossy kind of fragrances this is up your alley um so i'm going to give this fragrance a uh, 8.5 in terms of its smell it's just absolute quality stuff and uh, in terms of longevity i'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 i think this fragrance lasts quite fair um it's, it's quite a linear scent no it doesn't, it doesn't really change that much um when you first spray it you, you're greeted with this strong tobacco and the tobacco pretty much stays there uh throughout the entire scent um however it's more of course in the dry down it's 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 it's, it's a lot cleaner and powdery um and a lot more woodier in the dry down as well uh which i just love because of that vetiver you know i really like it so in terms of longevity, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So guys, yes, that has been my review for Open by Roger and Gallet. This is a, just a stunning scent that I think if you guys, like I said, love your mossy, green, tobacco, uh, smoky scents, this is a great one to go for. Uh, I used to compare this one to Giorgio Beverly Hills for men. But uh, yeah, my nose has changed since then. I actually don't think this is anything like that. Um, just because of that patchouli, I used to think the patchouli was a bit similar. However, since over time I've smelled this, the patchouli isn't as prominent as I used to think it was. This is definitely more to do with that tobacco and lavender and uh, gorgeous vetiver in there as well, guys. So, yes, guys, that has been my review for the absolutely beautiful Open by Roger and Gallet, released in 1985, a woody aromatic that I don't think you guys should ignore. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this fragrance and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves and keep smelling good. Bye-bye for now.